The interim agreement between the P5 plus 1 and Iran, agreed in November 2013, effectively required Iran to progress furthering its nuclear program, as well as limiting enrichment activity, in return for limited sanctions relief and some repatriation of frozen assets abroad. In January 2014, both sides agreed that the uh, terms of this interim deal would come into effect on 20th January. The key implications of the interim agreement is that it removes the option of a US-led military strike targeting Iran's nuclear facilities off the table, at least until the middle of 2014, but probably throughout the year. Furthermore, it also means that Iran is open for business for some sectors, such as European shipping insurers. However, this deal also exacerbates fears by Saudi Arabia of a resurgent in Iran and will probably promote a more aggressive and independent foreign policy to contain Iranian influence in Syria and in Lebanon. For its part, Israel fears that limited san sanctions reversal would allow Iran to continue to support its proxy groups in Syria and in Lebanon. It also fears that a broader agreement would take place without verifiable concessions that would curb Iran's ability to acquire a nuclear weapon at a later stage. Finally, of the regional actors, Turkey is the most likely to be able to live with a resurgent Iran and would probably its key concern would be to protect its air energy security and would probably seek to expand its commercial ties with Iran. Both the US and Iran have shown unprecedented willingness to negotiate in order to reach a broader settlement over Iran's nuclear program. Nevertheless, this doesn't mean there aren't major obstacles to be overcome. Not in the least agreement over the destruction or repurposing of the Iraq heavy water reactor, reversing Iran's capability to enrich 20% uranium, as well as allowing IAEA inspectors full access to military sites such as Parshin. Israel, for its part, is very likely to lobby the US and the EU in order to block a broader, comp a broader agreement, and failing that, block its implementation. Israel, to protect its own security, is also likely to step up operations targeting advanced weapon systems to prevent them from reaching Iran's proxy Hezbollah in South Lebanon. For its part, Saudi Arabia is also likely to escalate ideological and financial support for Sunni groups in order to contain Iranian influence in Iraq, in Syria and in Lebanon. Despite all these obstacles, willingness by both the US and Iran to reach a comprehensive settlement makes it much more likely to be achieved in the one-year outlook.